If you want to do it God's way, it is supernatural. Do it your way, ain't nothing going to change. I trust this way better than my way. Here we go. One.
and it's coming up on May the 14th. And um, but I'm sorry. Let's, can we just one more time? I know you've been up for a while, and and uh, but the man of God is here. Come on. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. The devil tried to throw a monkey wrench, but he's here. Yeah. And I count it great privilege, great honor to introduce this great general of the faith, Apostle Billy Wonders of Chicago, Illinois. Can we give him a great God bless you as the man of God? Y'all can be better than that. Come on.
promised me good, a youthful life. Amen. Amen. A youthful life and a feel good Amen. right now. We thank God for Apostle Jones Amen. and his life all the way from Nicodonia, Florida. Let's say amen for Apostle Jones. And this is his sister's. This is his sister right here. I want you to look real good. If you look and you look into the left eye, you see an arrow. You see an arrow. You see that arrow? It's an arrow. See that? See that arrow? It's pointing to that eyeball. You see that arrow? Yeah. See that? See that arrow? Yeah. That coming too pretty good right there? Yes, sir. See that arrow? See the arrow? All you drew an audience out. You see that arrow? Yeah. In the service, we begin to praise God. And the Lord spoke to me through prophecy that he will move quickly yeah. in that praise. Yeah. And she began to cry out. And she began to rejoice. And she put her hand over her eye and looked around and wiped the other eye and brought in a piece of tissue it looked like snot, the cataract burned off her eye. She moved. It burned off the eye. It burned off. Some strange stuff is going to happen. Amen. I want you to look at this real good. It's one of my staff workers. You ever see cancer close up? Look at that rotten cancer that just about rotten her thigh off. See that right there? See that? Look at that. See that? Almost rotten her thigh off. Look at that black cancer. See that? Come on, tell the testimony. Look at that. See that? That black cancer. Look at that cancer. Look at that. That black cancer. That black cancer. See that possible? Black cancer. Told her within 72 hours it will all dry up. Lord, Jesus. 72 hours. Look at that. Only left a scar. Just just a scar. Just a scar. Just left a scar. That's before and after. Just left the scar. Left the scar. See that? It just left a scar. It just left a scar. There she is, Vazis Jean. They wanted to chop off a third of her leg. Look at that. Now I gave her a mirror. Two hours, not so. He spoke in my right ear the way he's done the last 57 years. She went back to the doctor. They took a whole lot of goo gobs of x rays, couldn't find nothing. She had to go back several times. They thought they had the wrong person. Glory, hallelujah. No more cancer, gone. There are some of my followers that's watching across America. And, um, amen. I just hope that, wish that Jacqueline could come in, Jacqueline Joseph, and bring her son and daughter into the service. If you're watching Jacqueline, I want you to try to come in from Miami. I looked into her pregnant stomach and I saw two children. One was moving and the other one was exploding. And I told her, I see a child that's not moving. Why? She said, it's dead. And they get ready to remove it from me. And the Lord said, boom, not so. Boom. When God say not so, that's hey. it. Hey. Boom, not so. Hey. Somebody say amen. Amen. And 
when the revival was over, I left town and then I was told she went into labor and had little Isaiah, a twin. So I wanted to minister to you. And this is some services of quickness, swiftness. Some swift things will happen and manifest where there's been a delay, a slowdown, or a comedic interlude, a start and then a pause. God's going to call some continuation. Yeah. Isn't God wonderful? Yeah. I, I don't know if Pat is watching. But Pat, I wish you could come in from Chicago and to just if you could just come in and testify about that. I think it was BMW. She saw me when I was on Word Network. And when she saw me, I told her, said, someone needs a car. I said, I see a vehicle just for little for nothing. And I think it was the BMW. How much did she pay for it? Nothing. Getting close. Close. A hundred. A hundred? Yes. Close. Twenty bucks. It was not junk. No junk. Somebody say that. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes. I believe what God says. But I'm not crazy enough to believe what God said because crazy folk act crazy. They do crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I trust God. Hey. Oh, yeah. somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to go ahead and preach a little bit tonight and minister service on Saturday. I see you having much, many Saturday services here which will become a magnet geographically to people across America. Here, there, and yonder. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, I thank God for the anointed prophet Samuel. I wish you could come in and bring your cousin uh, because I told uh, the cousin one night, a beautiful girl came in the service. We call him Red. I said, Red, see that beautiful girl with the like, uh, hazel eyes? Yes. You know her? No, not really. That's your wife. And now they've been married now for about three years. Amen. Amen. His cousin tried to have a kid for about maybe five years. The last time I saw her, I told her, girl. And what did she have? A girl. A girl. Thank you, Jesus. God is precise. Yes, he is. And he don't make mistakes. Hey. Amen. He's a God. And you're sitting up under a very unique ministry. Yeah. A unique ministry, the man of God. Hey, let me go ahead and preach tonight a little bit. Pastor, when I preach, I'm going to go get that hammer and sound from me. I'm going to preach that a few minutes. I'm still trying to learn. I'm going to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> his dad was a personal friend of mine, and I would go to his dad every so often, Cosmopolitan, there in Los Angeles. Yes, yes, and um, God gave. Uh, a good revival. I just left there, went to Rochester, New York. And the last night of the service in Rochester, New York, the Lord said, snakes shall leave a child. Mm -hmm. And I prayed for this woman's kid. Now, when I talk, mm -hmm. I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting. It's all God. Yes, because God. the Bible said, God wrought special miracles by the way which Paul was a what? A vessel. Man don't get credit. I can't take no credit. It's God. Is that right? Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. And she uh, came to the last night of the service that Friday night. And she had a jar with about, I think, three snakes, dead snakes in the jar that come out of her little boy. That boy is grown now in preaching. Somebody say amen. Amen. Party. Somebody say, neighbor, neighbor, get ready. Get ready. The worst is over. The worst is and over. The best is yet to come. And the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. The worst is yet to come. And again, we can't forget our first lady and the only lady. Let's give God a hand clap for her tonight. Amen. It's good to have some backing in your life. 
Somebody say amen. amen. I need someone to read for me, please, real quick. Can I get somebody to read loud and clear? We're going into 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. God gave me this uh, message on the other day. I just finished doing five hours of prayer. And he gave me this message for the people. For the people. I cannot try to uh, preach something that I feel people need. Because, uh, you know, no person really knows a person's spiritual appetite, really. I could take everyone out tonight and treat you for chicken. Right. Amen. But some of you, your appetite will not be chicken. It might be a slab of ribs. Come on. Come on. T bone steak, filet mignon. Come on. Hmm? Lobster. Come on. Neck bones, ham hops, and red beans and rice. <laughs> See? But then when you preach a message from the Rasta, it goes throughout the congregation. Come on. Teach. And it touches the hearts of people. Yes. And they receive from God. Isn't God wonderful? Oh, yes. So we're going quickly into uh, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, and verse 50, and verse 51. 1 Samuel, 17th chapter, verse 50, and verse 51. Give me just a few moments, Apostle. How much time do I have? I want to hold you too late. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes. And it reads thus. David ran and stood over him. David ran and stood over him. Him was Goliath. Goliath was the giant. The Goliath was about uh, almost 10 feet tall. Weighed almost 500 pounds. Goliath. He ran. David did this. David approached something. Uh -huh. David approached it. I.T. There's times you approach it. There's times it approach you. And it reads thus. He took hold of the Philistines. Yes. Sword and drew it from the theft. What verse is that? 51. No, do, do 50 and 51. David triumphed over the Philistines. Yes. With a sling. With a sling. And a stone. And a stone. A sling and a stone. The stone and the sling was what he used against the wild animals that would try to attack uh, the prey. That would try to attack uh, the lambs and the sheep. Would thrust the stone from the sling to protect the flock. Come on now. Somebody say amen. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes. Yes. And it reads thus. Without a sword without, in his hand, yes. he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. Stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword yes. and drew it from the theft. Yes. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. Okay, do this. Go back and start, because the Holy Ghost is bringing to my attention, 49th verse, and go back again, 49 to 51. And here we go. Reaching into his bag, and taking out a stone. Took a stone out of the bag. Yes. He slung it. And slung it and whirled it. And struck the Philistine on the forehead. Tap that neat roach <laughs> in the skull. It sunk into the forehead. You know what's in your forehead? You have 20, 20 skeleton muscles up there. The stone sunk into the giant's forehead and begin to crush nerves, blood vessels, and the brain begin to bleed, and not Goliath unconscious. Let me say something tonight, my friends. Sometimes uh, the yoke is just broken. When the yoke is broken, you don't have a testimony yet. You not, don't have a total deliverance yet. You're not out of it completely yet. Because the yoke has been broken. It's a difference, disparity between the yoke broken and the yoke destroyed. So now I'm talking about the yoke to be destroyed. Once the yoke has been destroyed, that's all she wrote, my friend. 
it's all over. Come on now. Oh, you slap him. You slap them. It was David that slapped him harder than we'll slap Chris. Somebody say amen. Amen. Oh, forgive me, Lord. I've been slapped him with the stone. Somebody say amen. Amen. So it was not over because he smote him. Smote is a blow. Smote is a hit. Come on now. He hit Goliath, tapped him in the head with the stone that left the sling and sunk into his head and tore the tissue and chipped the bones up there and knocked his equilibrium off that he could not stand. So he fell to the ground unconscious. Yes, and it reads, can I preach tonight, y'all? And it reads, the stone sank into his forehead. Into his forehead. And he fell face down on the ground. He fell face in the world when I was a gangster. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. okay, Boom! When we would shoot and they fall to the ground with their face, they're going to die. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So, Goliath was in critical condition because of the blow, because of the stone. Why didn't David fight him with bare hands? Because the sling was in his spirit. Hey. Warfare is in your spirit. Victory is in your spirit. The anointing is in your spirit. Out of your spirit shall flow rivers of living water. Come on. Bellicose, which means willing to fight, is in your spirit. Yes. Hell started and God finished it. And it reads thus. Well, so David tried over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. A sling and a stone. Yes, read. Without a sword in his hand. He did not have a sword because he was not accustomed. He tried to work with Saul's armor gear, but he couldn't do it. So the Bible states and elucidate that he took it off. He put it off. That's what the Bible said. Yes, and it reads. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. It killed him. David ran and stood over him. And stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword. And took hold of the sword. And drew it from the set. And drew it from the sheath. Yes. And after he killed him. After he killed him. He cut off his head with the sword. He cut, he chopped his head off. Like cutting the chicken's head off. He cut his head off. Why? Because the yoke was just broken. Well, it was just broken. It was not destroyed. It was sometime you wound the enemy. Sometime you daze him. You make him stagger. Come on now. But once it's over, it's over. You have two words that sound similar. You have a word called Armageddon, which would be the last war where blood would come up to uh, the, the shoulder of the, of the horse. Armageddon. But then what happened? It's a war. It's a battle. Come on now. The angels against demons. But then after that, there is a horror from armor. Horror being a defeat. Somebody say amen. amen. You can tell when the battle is over because everything begins to lift all the tension, all the pressure that tries to crush you to make you an antimatter pancake box. Somebody say amen. amen. And it reads thus. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead. When they saw a hero, which means champion. When they saw that Goliath was dead, they saw he was dead. The champion. Demons know when the leader has been defeated. Oh, Demons do know when you have the victory. They can't try it no more because the strong source has been Oh, sabotage. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why the Bible said in 1 John 3 and 8 that Jesus came that he may destroy the works of the devil. Destroy is to sabotage, to get a joy out of putting the devil in his place. And it reads thus. They turned and ran. They ran. They turned and ran. Now, oh, you want to find out, people of God, how much damage that you uh, cause the witches and the warlocks and the, oh the suicides and those evil folk that don't like you 
that claim to like you and try to smile like Mona Lisa and get in your face and put on a front. Oh, you get ready to tear down. And God is going to come in uh, and move in a strong manner. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now watch this. I, I like to know for every time that I come out of a battle, I like to know how much did God uh, did I uh, abuse that Negro? Come on now. Somebody say amen. amen. In verse 57, and it reads, And soon the Philistine, as soon as he returned from the slaughter, he came from the slaughter. Yes, a bloody war. He returned from the slaughter with joy. He returned from the slaughter with triumph. He became from the slaughter as a victor and not a victim. Sometimes the devil gets in a good punch and might tag you upside your head, but you got to shake it off. <laughs> Somebody say that. When I first learned the box back when I was a kid, Billy Braggs in Milwaukee was kind of taught me how to take a punch. You can't take a punch, you're out of it. Oh, I, so I took those punches and shook it. Come on now. Somebody say amen. Amen. There's a time in warfare that you must take a punch and know how to shake a punch and bob and weep. God's going to give you the speed of Muhammad Ali, the punch of Mike Tyson, and the kick of Bruce Lee. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes, yes. Get somebody by the hand, look him in the eyes, and say, neighbor, amen. where in the world have you been? I called you, but you didn't answer. I text you, do you didn't respond? Say, where in the world have you been? Say, neighbor, I got to tell you, out of my heart, I just returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Somebody say amen. Isn't God wonderful? He returned from the slaughter. And there's all type of battles, all type of wars. There are minor battles or minor wars, and possible there are major uh, battles. I was in crusade, but let me say this. God told me, son, he told me 21 times, eat right, take care of your body, and get enough rest, you'll live a long time. I was in Columbia, South Carolina, and I was preaching, and all of a sudden, <laughs> I couldn't breathe. <laughs> so after church I went to the hotel and I lay down to sleep and I, to 12 uh, to uh, 9 o'clock that morning I had to sit up and, and sleep and <laughs> I couldn't breathe and let me say something, y'all. Satan don't have no legal authority down here. He works with mistakes. He works with complaints. He works with weak folk. Somebody say amen. amen. So what happened, I end up going to the hospital. And they checked me and they said, we must keep you overnight. They took me upstairs to a room. Watch this, y'all. They took me to a room upstairs and they checked me again. That morning they put a heart monitor on me, Apostle. They put uh, IV in my urn. They said, we need to take you downstairs and inject uh, this uh, in your groan to look at your heart. What's wrong, Doc? If you your heart stopped beating, what do you want? I said, bring me back because I didn't have a chance to eat my Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> they said, what it is, Reverend, your heart rate is 15%. Your kidneys are shutting down. 
And I begin to check myself to say, Lord, what is this? I mean, ain't no demon can just come upon me and just, you know, because I'm a warrior. You have discernment and you use the wisdom of God. Come on. The Bible said, be careful for nothing. What? That means don't take a chance on anything. What? And that thing worked on my mind. And God said, son, remember? For two weeks, you ate pork steaks. <laughs> he told me to eat right, take care of my body, time to get enough rest. I live a long time. So I violated one of those laws. Come on now. So Satan don't have nothing to work with, what? apostle, except people give it to him. He has no legal authority. You see, Satan asked God, have not thou made a hedge around him? Why did he say that? Because he tried to go through the head so many times, but couldn't. God put a defense around Job and his family. Somebody say amen. amen. And when it was all over, he released me. They said, Reverend, stay away from too much salt. Your blood pressure. That's been about two years ago. Somebody say amen. amen. See what I'm trying to say? So Satan could not attack me just like that. When you have a prayer life, when you're dedicated, I learned how to pray. I had two patches, but I learned how to pray in an attic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, real cold with the night. I shut in for three hours uh, all night long and leaned up against the chimney and prayed. An angel so tall had to come in of the attic and talk to me. Somebody say amen. amen. Told me how to detect when witchcraft is around, how to detect voodoo, how to detect evil spirits. Somebody say amen. amen. Now I'm going to show you something, my friends. Uh, a yoke broken uh, is not a total deliverance. Come on, come on now. Mm -hmm. amen. Amen. A yoke that is destroyed brings you into a deliverance. Why? Because you had the test, now you need the money. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, come yeah. on with the testimony. So this thing works in you. You keep speaking it. You keep saying it. You keep claiming it. I'm coming out of it. I'm coming out. Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Negroes was in the fiery furnace. They kept in their hearts. We're coming out of this thing. And they came out of it. Somebody say amen. Sometimes folk are quiet as a library and very taciturn, eventually quiet, because you don't always know what they're facing. You, some folk are get quiet all of a sudden because they're dealing with something very personal, something very critical. It's a giant in their life. It's a giant in their pathway. It's a giant, come on down, on their doorstep. It's a giant in the marriage. He creeped into the marriage. He creeped in to the finance. He creeped into the ministry. He creeped in. That's why the Bible says we should tread on serpents and scorpions. Sometimes you tread through their territory. Other times they tread on your territory. But you could fight better when they come on your territory. Somebody say amen. amen. This is why God gave me that thought. I just returned from the slaughter. I returned I've got some battle scars upside my head. My lips are swollen. Two black eyes look like Lone Ranger the Coon. But I came out on top. I came out with the victory. I came out. I came out. I got tired and fed up with them. So I turned that plate down for seven days. I, I prayed off and on. Don't you know hell hates bread? He hates when you commune with God. Come on, if you don't, if you don't contact God, you don't contact heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. And so you return from the slaughter. And somebody here tonight is coming out of the slaughter. You're coming out smiling like Mona Lisa. Oh, you get ready to I'll sing American Idol and I'll dance soul train. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes, amen. Return from the slaughter. I'm returning from the slaughter. Now the devil, what he does, is this all right tonight? Are you sure? Yeah. What the devil does, he tries to put you down and make a joke out of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. He don't confront you with sorrow or grief or make you try to make you melancholy when everything is smooth and satin and clear as a crystal. He has no reason to because everything is in order. The order of God is logical arrangement and disposition of things. So at your uh, most uh, uh, 
trouble moment. He slings in all type of plans to make you think you're the only one that's going through. You're the only one that have arthritis. You're the only one that limp. You're the only one that's going blind. Somebody say that. When folk go in, somebody's coming out. When somebody go down, God is raising somebody up. Somebody say amen. Can I preach a little bit tonight? Say amen again. So Satan, uh, what happened? Goliath confronted David and made a statement in uh, 1 Samuel 17, 42nd verse and 43 verse. Is this all right tonight? Can I just... Teach a little bit, if that's okay. Amen. Somebody say amen. I'm, I'm going to tune up a little bit and just. Amen. And it reads thus. He took David over and saw that he was little more than a boy. Just a boy. Yeah, just a little boy. He don't know nothing. He don't know nothing. Uh, a young, a, a young, young boy that's young and rudy don't have the experience of a real man. Come on, man. So amen. 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 I was talking to. Uh, I have a lot of friends in California, celebrities I pray for. I shouldn't say y'all might think I'm bringing it. That's not the point. I don't say that. But I had a young man before he became known ask me about uh, celebrities. And I began to teach him and share some things with him. But I said, the secret is when you become a celebrity, bring God in with you. Amen. 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 Bring God in with you. Somebody say amen. 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 And I had just got saved and I left the group. Some of you may not be this old when I called this group out. I just left the group in 1965. Yeah. We did a song uh, called Get On Up and Get Away by the Esquires. Okay. Somebody say, some of y'all may not remember that. Isn't God wonderful? <laughs> and I got up and I got away. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Amen. And it reads thus. Glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. And he put David down. He put him down. He lowered him. He tried to uh, diatribe him with cutting words to influence his mind, to make him have a drifting mind. And it reads thus. He said to David. Said to David. Am I a dog? Now, he said that for this reason. Because he saw David with the staff in his hand. But he said it for this reason. He said, David, am I a dog? He said that because Philistines during that time ate dog and pork. But the Israelites ate beef and lamb. So he tried to uh, talk stuff to David. To belittle him and make him feel very uh, low as a tick in the skin. Somebody say amen. amen. That you come at me with sticks. You come towards me with a stick. And the Philistines cursed David by his God. That word God is small g-o-d-s yes. which is called polytheism. They worship sun gods. They worship Molech. They worship Dietra. The goddess woman, oh, that would approach a woman to speak over her, to have babies and stuff. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. They were uh, uh, worshiping uh, idols. The Israelites had problems with the Amalekites. One big problem they had with the Amalekites. The Amalekites were sorcerers and could turn themselves into the siblings uh, as an animal. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't God wonderful? Amen. So what God is saying tonight, you fought. You fought and you fought. And some of y'all had to fight by yourself. Amen. Because everybody's not equipped or experienced to fight wars like that. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But when you fight new wars, you need new ideas. You need a new anointing for that particular war. Because the last war was different. It was not as it was not as critical as that war. Somebody say amen. 
uh, the last time, my first time I was in the hospital was in 1965. They removed the kidney and took the blood clot out and sewed me up and put it back in me. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes, yes. So what God is saying tonight, get ready. Because God's getting ready to show up and show off. He's getting ready to show you that he is always strong and will never let you down. Where people lose the grip and lose the confidence in God because they feel it's taking God too long. Some things God has delayed on purpose to humble you and make you acquiescence, to make you subject unto God that you might listen to him and follow the instructions in coming out of this thing. So God teaches us uh, uh, under Gachi. He teaches us by way of mature and adults. He teaches children pedagogy. Huh? But you teach a child, you don't teach a grown up. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, I feel this thing that I cannot preach a little bit tonight. So it's, it's, it's a slaughter. It was a battle. It's a battle some of you going through. It, it's a war. But you're coming out of a slaughter. It turned into a slaughter. It turned into a slaughter. Oh, you coming out of, you came out of last year. Oh, and last year, 2021. Oh, my God. Look what God done. Kept you all those hours. Almost 9,000 hours last year. Almost 600,000 hours last year. Almost 31,536,000 seconds last year. And you're still breathing. This is why you can say, look where he brought me from. There's been some close calls. There's been some almost. Come on now. You almost was crushed in the car accident. You almost died in your sleep. I told somebody asked me a question, Pastor, what is it? When you have a horrific dream and a nightmare and you wake up sweating, I said, what it is the dream pulled from you. It pulled from your strength while you were sleeping. And then you got to come back and become more revitalized and tell God, come on in. God, and stare me up. God, put and add more spunk to my fire. Somebody say amen. amen. So if anybody know how to come out, it's the saints of God. If you go in, you ought to know how. Somebody said, if you came in after church, you what? Some of y'all going to the restaurant. You going home, you came in, you come out. If you go in the test, then you can come out of the test. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Get somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, amen. I've just returned from the slaughter of the, from the Philistine. Come on, say it one more time, neighbor. neighbor. I've just returned from the slaughter from of the Philistine. Somebody say amen. amen. A slaughter is bloody. A slaughter is bloody. It's, it's, a, it's a sad thing to see. You have uh, the largest oh, hog slaughterhouse, which is called Smithville Slaughterhouse. And about 10,000 hogs are slaughtered a day. They paint the hog upside down and slice his throat. He could be awake or he could be uh, dead, unconscious. But they hate that slaughterhouse up. A slaughterhouse smells like iron because of the blood. It stinks in a slaughterhouse. They kill and slaughter the animals and hit them in the head with a hatchet and shoot them in the brain or put them in the gas chamber or uh, electrocute them but they smell like blood tongue hanging out of their mouth poop dropping from the back 
gut splashing on the floor. The slaughterhouse. So you get ready to slaughter the situation and show the devil that you're tired of it. I'm fed up with the devil. I'm fed up with the enemy. I'm through with everything. You didn't take it from nobody in the street. You didn't take it from your husband's mama. You didn't take it from your wife's daddy. You had not taken it from nobody else. Now nah, you're in holiness. You're saved and sanctified. And filled with the Holy Ghost. And God has put it in your spirit. The spirit of holy boldness. You're not afraid of the dark. You're not afraid of the big bad wolf. Great is he where? Did he that's in the that outside demons? That's why the Bible said in Ephesians 6, oh, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. You can punch all you want to punch and not harm a demon, but you can fight that thing in spirit and in warfare. Somebody say yes and tear down the stronghold. Somebody say yes. I was on Facebook the other night and I was teaching about warfare and I told them that uh, I know about witchcraft. I know how it works and I told them let me explain something. I don't practice witchcraft but every witch that got delivered through my ministry after they got delivered I asked them what made you do that? And how would you make folk lose their minds? What which said a girl that got delivered? I would take a uh, cat guts and snake guts and cut a hole in the pumpkin and drop the guts down in the pumpkin and write people's names on paper and put it in the pumpkin. And I tell Satan, in seven days, let him die. Somebody say yes. And this is how I know about witchcraft. Because when folk get delivered, I like to listen to them. Somebody say amen. And testify what God has done for you. I remember a, a lady got healed of diabetes. They were ready to chop her leg off. And she told me what she did. And then when I got diabetes, you know what I did what she did. I claimed that I didn't have it. I looked like I didn't have it. I walked like I didn't have it. And then 09, in Chicago, Illinois, the Lord spoke in my right ear and said, son, go take another blood test. And when I went to take another blood test, they drew my blood and said, call back Monday. We don't do nothing on the weekend. So I called back Monday. They said everything looks good. Uh, what do you mean look good? Well, don't see no diabetes. I said, well, I thought I had it. They said, if you had it or you fraud, think different. It ain't bad no more. God has a way of doing things. And I'm here to tell y'all on the night, the battle's coming to an end. I'm here to tell y'all the night, we get ready to look up. Everybody that's not blind, wave your hand and say, I can see. Say, I can see. I'm going into Psalm 121. What makes you see? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. Say yes. Say yes. It's been a long war. It's been a long battle. Last a long time. We fought the Vietnam War. We fought it in 1955 to 1975. We fought for 20 years. About five, ten years ago, I was at your church. I saw a vision of people healthy and dropping dead. I saw that and I said, I see people by the scores and then next thing you know 
Corona came in. Corona is a crown disease. It's a magnet. It collects all type of mucus and disease and viruses because it's Corona. But the Lord told me in prayer three days ago, and I say it again, he said, son, between one third and one fourth of the Corona is going to lift this year in a certain state. He didn't tell me what state. He said it's going to live. Remember, years ago, some folk used to laugh at the Chinese folk wearing masks. Now we're wearing masks. Somebody say yes. Say yes. I saw AIDS a long time ago. I saw AIDS that appeared before my eyes. And it said AIDS. I asked God, what does AIDS mean? He said, A, America is dying slowly. AIDS as another hit that's going to hit America. And I'm praying right now, you're going to find a big list of suicide. Suicide. Movie stars committing suicide. Businessmen committing suicide. He's going to try to come to the church and make folk give up. But I'm here to tell you, it's coming to an end. The songwriter said one day that I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. Trouble comes, but it's got to go. It can't stay there. It's got to go. It came to harm you. It came to hurt you. It came to wipe you out. But it's got to go. Lift your hands and say, neighbor, I return from the slaughter. Say to your neighbor, I return. If 
if I can just leave my whole life over again. If I can just live my whole life over again. If I can just live my whole life over again. I live it. Every day, Jesus will stay. If I can just leave my whole life over again. Let me say that one more time. If I can just leave my whole life over again. Ma'am, spin it out real quick. Yes. If I can just live as a puff of blue and gray smoke over your head. A puff of blue and gray smoke has just appeared over her head. They come into the services. These puff of gray and blue smoke, Apostle. And when they open up, I can look into the cloud and see something. Is there another microphone we could use for her? Isn't that wonderful? You take your seats if you can. The one is standing. Do I know you, ma'am? No. Have I ever talked to you before? Not really, right? No. <laughs> Would you come up this way, please? Just come. Good, right there. That's good. May I pray for you? Yes. I want to touch God for you. And the reason why I want to touch God for you is because some while back, maybe a year, four years ago, you came out of a great battle Amen. where the enemy wanted to put you in a hospital. Jesus. Huh? He wanted to put you in a hospital for your health. He wanted to bother your heart. Hmm? He wanted to bother your heart. Your heart used to raise. You would have a regular heartbeats. Hmm? Put that to the mouth, please. Yes. You from here? Uh, yes, on that area. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they were, I, I see uh, this cloud appear over your head. And I see um, people coming out of this building. And, and, and I saw it over your head. And I saw it in the back. I don't know what it means. Uh, I saw them go in this place and I saw the word. I saw the word. Uh, I can't get it quite together. I saw this word. It looked like it was bridge, but it was like stock or something. Stock something. Stock bridge. I don't know what, it, what this. I mean, I saw people go into this word. There's a word that turned to the building. They went into it. Some came out, some didn't. Anybody know what that is? Stockbridge. What is Stockbridge? It's a city here. It's a city. It's a city. Hmm? It's a city. It's a city. Yes. A couple blocks over Stockbridge. Stockbridge. Is there a hospital out there? Yeah. Piedmont. Piedmont. You ever been out there? No, I haven't. You know anybody been out there? No. Who knows someone been out there? I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for three things. When I walk up on you, and this happened in some services, I hear water flowing like a faucet. That don't make sense to it. No. I'm detecting through the word of knowledge as a reflux. Burning up the salt of your chest is true. You see the doctor for that? No, I haven't. Okay, you want to have that tonight. And let's do it. Acid reflux. And as I walk upon you, I get dizzy and lightheaded because your blood pressure 
is off balance. Amen. Yeah. Hmm? Take Say that again, please. Take yeah. When I walked up on you, I felt lightheaded. Amen. Now, people might say, Any, everybody have high blood pressure. Everybody don't have high blood pressure. Amen. Everybody don't have it. I have a pet. I have a pet by the lady, but she don't have high blood pressure. I want to pray for one of your lungs. Because when you were born, you were supposed to end up with uh, asthma or a breathing problem in your chest, in your lungs. Hmm? I want to pray for you. I don't see I don't see your mother around your father. Why is that? They're deceased. I can't. They, they're, they're deceased. Yes. <laughs> your mother fought for you because a witch that did not like your mother and your mother would speak her tongue and say what she said and she wouldn't take it back. Is that right? Yes, I can hear you. Like my mom. Okay. And because some things that happened, you were not supposed to be born. My God, my God. You were supposed to die. Now, there was supposed to have been a brother or another hey. sister living right now. Hey, I can hear you. My brother. Dad. I don't know who hey, is Robert, Bob, or Robert. Who'd you come with tonight? With my sister-in-law, Rose. Come, Rose. <laughs> Ro I heard Bob, Robert. I have a Robert in our family, my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law's what? His name is Robert. Okay, good. Stand next to her now. Now, who is that? Oh, God, baby. <laughs> God, baby, I'm going to pray for you. God, baby, had cancer, was dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Dying of, let's say this right from down here. Breast cancer. You, you, you came all the way from where? Atlanta. Atlanta. All the way from Atlanta. <laughs> to see God there. Wow. And you were down to about 19 pounds, I believe it was. Let me hear I had lost weight. A lot of weight. Lot of, I didn't know he was at first. Time. I know. And she had lost some. She was just, just small. And God spoke to me in my right ear, Apostle. When God speaks to me in my right ear, he speaks with a whisper. The last 57 years in ministry, First Lady Prophetess, God has spoken in my right ear. Let me get back there. Don't sit down yet. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for uh, just a few more minutes. I want to pray for you because some other siblings were supposed to die with lung problems, asthma, sinus, and hay fever and stuff. I want to pray for you tonight. go right away let the prayer cloth touch his body and in 72 hours he woke up I want to pray for you tonight I want to pray for the back of your neck the vertebrae because that was supposed to have been a severe car accident huh I can't hear you. About three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. 
there was a blue car also that tried to go by and almost hit your car. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? I lay my hand on you right now. From the crown of your head to the skull, there it is, there it is, of your feet. Be thou made whole. You'll be all right. God, is, what, is your neck okay tonight? Wear that prayer cloth, and God's going to touch you one of the ankles and one of your legs. God, oh, baby, it's so good to see you. So good to see you. Isn't God wonderful? Yes, yes. There is a financial breakthrough in three to four weeks. Get ready. Yes. who was in the coffin but you were weeping it's because somebody died too soon my son Yay. say that again my son how old was he two and a half months old I thought he was three two and a half your son your son had a problem off and on with his heart and with his breathing yeah. like asthma now when you got pregnant um, it was so close near after your monthly it kind of threw you off yes. is that right? yeah I just about to cut you saying, I didn't think I just come Mary had a little yeah. lamb just step here. <laughs> they told me I wasn't pregnant for four months. See, I was four months pregnant and they kept telling me I wasn't. Say that again. They kept telling me I was I wasn't pregnant, but I was four months pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I want to pray for you. The Lord told me everyone I put a prayer cloth in their hand. These prayer cloths will be in the next stay in your house with you? My daughter and my dogs. <laughs> what do you have, a chihuahua? Oh, no. What do you have? I have big dogs. Oh, okay. <laughs> what type of dogs you have? A pit bull and an Aussie shepherd mix. Mm -hmm. I have a shepherd by the ladybug. <laughs> yeah, my, my other pet, I think they look like this. Mm -hmm. She was a husky wolf. Shepherd had blue eyes, died in my living room. But I'm going to, you're going to cut up a piece of that and you're going to put that on the one a while back that had some choking. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They're going to wear that and God is going to open their windpipe more. Because something they chewed on, it, it went down the wrong pipe. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> Let's get down the head for a minute. And I see you're going to get some more pet food. Some more dog food because it's running kind of low now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I see your refrigerator, the milk that I have have a quart. Yeah, we have a quart. Okay. Two eggs. <laughs> but you are going to. I'm vegan, by the way. That's why. I, that's all I have in there. <laughs> See, say it again. I'm vegan, so that's all I really have. <laughs> that's all she has in the refrigerator. So but the Lord is going to fill it up, and I see. And I'm not saying this to flatter you. 
but I see this beautiful vehicle. To me, the front end looks like Mercedes Benz. It is. <laughs> vision board. So. It's, it's yours. It's just a matter of time. It's like a bright color. Yeah. Hmm? How did I know this? I don't know. Maybe you look at me and say Mercedes. Yeah. God, God showed me. God showed me. Now, I want to say this. Another reason you were not built up strong enough your uterus to carry the baby. Yeah. And then they thought they saw some blood clots. They thought they could need a history of partial. Yeah. Tumors. I had tumors removed. Yeah. There is a growth right now mm. that's on the left side. Mm -hmm of you in your breast. And you thought about a mammogram. Yeah. Tell the people the man of God is telling the truth. Yeah, you're telling the truth. Yeah. I'm going to curse this to the roof tonight. Yes. And God is going to heal you. And a funny acting neighbor that lives in your neighborhood because I see where you live at. Mm -hmm. You live just a little ways up from a school. Mm -hmm. But you will be moving out of there okay. into another location. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Somebody in your family must make a U-turn to come back and apologize to you. It's a female, mm -hmm. and she talks too much, mm -hmm. like she has diarrhea from the mouth. Mm -hmm. She don't understand mm -hmm. the connection between you and God. Um, Ma'am, there was a woman that spoke something against you a while back. You almost lost everything and thought that you'd have to move out of town and start all over again. Yeah. Hmm? Anybody know that? Yeah. Hmm? You know that? Yeah. But God is going to send in a multiplicity of things to grace you. I thought I saw you around children or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you taught school or what. No. Why did I see you around children? I don't know. I, don't, I have one child, so I know mm -hmm. I've, I've wanted more children. It's like, I'll just get dogs. Okay. <laughs> one of the pets have an R in their name. Yeah, I named them royalty. <laughs> Let's get out of here. They're protected. I'm going to tell you about your they pit bull. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a secret. I had a pit bull by the name of Miss Knucklehead. <laughs> if any of the pets get mange, you know what mange is? Mange? Mange. No. It's a sickness that pets get and the fur falls off and they get scabby and they die. Yeah, you feed them, um, oh boy, mackerel fish. A lot of mackerel fish would clear that up. Okay. It would clear it, would clear it up. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. You support me while I'm here. Okay. It doesn't support you. That lump is up over your left breast. If you put your hand up over the L, the L in your chest, right there. That's where it is. It moves and sometimes it pushes up against your digestive tract and you almost feel nauseous like you're going to throw up. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody know that? Nobody know that? 
Can you feel that little lump? No, not. I can feel it when I'm laying down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in 72 hours, which is three days, 72 hours, it will be gone. Okay? 72 hours. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name. Let's get out of here for our family. And that prayer cloth and that prayer tonight will stop cancer from being implanted in your breast. It was a woman by the name of Gloria that was not really your friend. She was jealous of you because you were a people's person. Let's get out of here, class tonight. Would you stand, please, ma'am, right here with the glasses on? Would you stand right in this section of the church? It's right over here. Just face me, please. Would you stand next to her, please? You know her? Okay, put the microphone to me. Do you know her? I just met her. I don't really know her. Okay. Well, to me, really, to be frank, I thought you was a member. I thought you were supposed to be here. You believe that? Because your heart is soft as charming tissue. And you mean business with God, but you were hurt in some things through some church folk that were your friends but they turned on you because they were jealous of you because they didn't understand the connection that you had with God. Chateau or ta 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 ta. Um, I want to pray for you tonight, okay? Put the record on. Yes. I want to pray for you. And I want to say this, ma'am. I want you to hear me. I see the word person P-E-R-S-O-N that wounded you years ago that hurt you so that it made your guards go up but God is going to heal you you are going to read Isaiah 1 and 6 when you get home okay I want to pray for you how many children do you have you have a girl Yes. how old is she is she not 31? In June. <laughs> All right. She'll be 31 in June. Yes. And you were not supposed to have her. Because the enemy tried to bring a miscarriage on you. But it's God's will for her to be born. Because his hand is upon her. And matter of fact, if she was standing beside you, you and her could pass for sisters. Is that right? I see the word over your head, business. Business. I don't know if you plan it on having a business, but I see business. And I lay my hand on you from the crown of your, oh God, there it is. In Jesus' name, amen. You're returning from the slaughter. When I looked over your head, I saw some paper. But in me seeing the paper, somebody tear me a piece of paper, please, out of a book. Are y'all enjoying this night? You sure?
talking about anything about you doing. You were supposed to have had a quarter of a million dollars. Are y'all sure you y'all enjoy this? I'm not boring. Would you say, ma'am? It's been in my spirit that I was supposed to get some money from somewhere. Yes. I told my God, baby, and I'm gonna call around and let y'all hear that she was waiting for a whole three years to get uh, uh, $185,000. And um, Lord spoke to me to a prophetic after she planted a seed. And within five days, the lawyer called her, said, Come to the office, I got a check for you, $185,000. making a lot of money, but out of this area, like in another area far away. But you didn't go because your heart is with the ministry. Ma'am, make yourself feel at home here. The Church about Walls International, this is your, after our joint, this is your gas station and your restaurant. Own. Uh, drinks are on the house. <laughs> Before you sit down, I want to pray for you. And God speaks to me. I prayed 40 days and 40 nights, Apostle over each eyeball that when I look at the people's lives they will be keen and accurate. Ma'am, you ask God, what is my purpose? One of the purposes, you are a dreamer. I feel God. I fasted over each eyeball 40 days. Hmm? each eyeball, that I might look into people's lives and see what God shows me. God, what's your name? Nicole. Nicole, God hath not forgotten you. Hallelujah! The Lord told me to tell you that, okay? That he hath not forgotten you. He hath not forgotten you. He hath not forgotten you. And something that has been at a standstill is going to turn on your behalf and blow your mind. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name, God release this chateau. Okay. Let's get down the head clap somebody. This is God on the floor. Apostle, this building is just temporarily. This building is a provost building. Yeah. This building is preparing your ministry for the next one that's yeah. way larger than this. Yeah. About maybe, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes from here. Come on, man! Oh, man. The good parking facility. There's a man that's dealing, God's dealing with him and, uh, and he's trying to deal with him to be a blessing to you with about a hundred grand. Jesus. If he opens up right away, if he opens up right away, he'll get in contact with you. It will be a cashier check. Doing this tonight? Yeah. 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 Oh, you're tall. 
I need a step ladder. Get, get those pain pills. You know some across America, I don't care if I'm in London, Italy, Toho Baja, Savannah, Seca. God should have a medication service where I pray for people to come off medication. God's going to go into your pelvic area, into your legs, and he's going to build up calcium in your bones. Because a while back, you almost slipped or fell or tripped somewhere almost a while back. I want to pray for you. You have a gift that is very keen. But at first, you didn't work with it because you wanted to make sure that it was God. The discernment is, uh, the gift is discernment and prophetic prophecy. From the crown of your head, you may feel some heat as I walk up towards you. From the crown of your head, to the soles of your feet. You take those for what? What do you take those for? How long have you had it? Um, I've been in the Army three years. You in the Army? Yes, sir. You there three years? You got out. I don't know why I keep looking over your head at uh, this word. Uh, Germany and uh, Merlin after Merlin somewhere. But I see some explosives. One is called Composition C4. And I see where arthritis is trying to set in because of the work you did. But I command, I give you a prayer call. You want to wear that on you? In your sleep, in your sleep, God will visit you. The vet's going to visit you and some transactions are going to take place. It's a pain of work. They want to know did it happen in the army? Is God wonderful? Yes, he is. I was in the army one day. I was in 101 Screaming Eagles. And you know what that is? Airport. We, we jump out of the plane. Then we wore the barrettes, green barrettes on the side. I was special forces. Okay. We was trained to train all the year. Uh, wow. I told my mom when I got home, she said, never kiss me my jaw, son. <laughs> <laughs> my God. <laughs> it's nice to smile this yes. in Jesus, but you're going to be healed from that. He comes home late and you're watching him on Facebook. He comes home late and he comes home. You think he's been out with women, but he hasn't. He's been working overtime, overtime to get you that uh, uh, vehicle. And you'll see. Don't listen to nobody else. Just have food ready for him <laughs> and something else. Is it not wonderful? Let's give God a hand clap for that. Let's give God a hand clap.